Before installing your swivel seats or connecting or disconnecting any electrical wiring, be sure to disconnect the negative side of your battery. On the ProMaster, there is a quick disconnect lever, making it very easy and convenient to take that off. Tuck that down next to the battery, making sure that it won't pop back up and somehow reconnect or touch the negative terminal. The battery in the ProMaster is under a panel directly in front of the driver's seat. After you've disconnected the battery, the first thing you want to do to install the passenger swivel is to remove these three screws and then pull this cover off. When you try to pull that cover off though, you might get some resistance. Here's why. Around the back side, there's this little indent right here. So you need to pull the cover off gently because that little indent goes around that little piece of metal. So if you just try to pull, you're going to meet a lot of resistance. So if you just pull this out, it'll be a lot easier. Then we move back around to the passenger door. After you've moved that off the back, then you just got to pull. There's a little bump right here, and it'll pop right off. It's very difficult to stop from putting stuff on the seat, but really good idea to not put things on the seat. Otherwise, you might puncture the seat. It's a bad habit that I have. The next thing is to remove this screw right here. So far, all the screws that we've taken out use a T20 Torx bit. After you take that out, you fold that down and here are all your electrical connections. Now remember, before you go to the next part, make sure you've disconnected your battery. Then we're going to disconnect each one of these leads. To do that, I'm first going to disconnect this. You take a pair of needle nose pliers, just squeeze, and that'll come off. Same with this one. A squeeze, that'll come off. It makes it really easy to disconnect these. It's a little spring here. Pull on that, and they come apart. Same thing here, little spring. Pull the spring and they slide apart. So color coded, so you're not going to mix that up. At least I hope you're not going to mix that up. I've had students who would still mix that up. Then disconnect this one. And now all of those are loose. Move the seat forward. And then we move around to the back. There are four bolts. It takes a Torx bit. The size is T40. So to get this off and make it easy on myself, put a little pipe in there. And it makes it much easier. And you're not going to slam your hand into something. And there they go. And it's always good to have a little magnetic tray that you can store everything in. Then we have to move the seat back. and take the two bolts that are in the front out. Same size bolt.
with those six bolts out, the seat should be free. I forgot to cut the zip ties. Okay, I got the seat free, but I forgot to cut the zip ties. So, got to cut these cable ties off so that the wires are completely free. And then you can move the chair. Let's try that again. This is a swivel, it's about just under 30 pounds. First thing you do is offset the swivel. Then line up your bolts. Then you're going to take the bolts you took out of the chair and you're going to bolt them back in using washers that came with the swivel. I recommend putting in each one by hand, then tightening them up a little bit, and then really tighten them down with the wrench. You have to offset the swivel to the other side to get to that bolt right there. So now I've got them all snugged in. Tighten them up by hand. And then I'll use my wrench. Tighten up the right. And tighten them up the rest of the way. Next step is put the seat back on. I took the seat and put it on its side so I could show you a little bump out that is on the seat, which is right here. That's a pressure fitting of some sort for the sliders. And this, when it's put on the swivel correctly, fits right in one of the holes in the slider. And when that fits in that hole, everything matches up and you can put your bolts in. So if this is sitting on top of the slider, then you're not in the right place. You'll know when these two on both sides kind of drop in and you'll see all the bolt holes match up. I think they may have made a, a change in this universal slider so that that would accommodate this little bump out because if they didn't do that it sits right on top of that and that's no good so so far it seems to be working out well
then tuck your wires through the hole. Once you have everything lined up, then you take a bolt and two washers. Gonna be a washer on each side. Put the bolt up from the bottom with a washer. Put the washer on the top and put the nut on top. It's a 13 millimeter nut. The washers provided are lock washers. Then install your other four bolts in the back. Now that I have all six bolts installed and tightened up by hand, now I'm going to tighten them up. Remember it's a 13 millimeter socket or wrench. You'll notice my feet dangle. That's because the cargo area in a Ram ProMaster is about six inches lower than the seating area in the driver and passenger seats. That's one of the reasons I had to do this at this point in my van build, because I have to decide if I'm going to build a box or something to rest my feet on and how big that box will be. Because the size of that box could affect the position of the shower pan, and the shower pan could affect the position of the refrigerator, the seat, and so on. Everything is really interrelated when you start building a van. So if you save an inch here, you might lose an inch someplace else. So you can plan as much as you want, but until you actually start putting things in place, things are going to change a little bit, and you have to be prepared for that. So we still have to finish this project up. We've got to complete the electrical put the panel back on and clean things up. This would be a great time for you to hit the thumbs up button and possibly subscribe and hit that little notification bell so you can follow along with the rest of the van build. Now let's get back and complete that electrical. To put the electrical back you just do it backwards. Put the connectors back together And snap these back in. And put your screw back in. Then we just need to put the side panel on. And the three screws, which is in our little magnetic holder here. And that's all there is to installing a seat swivel. It honestly should take you less than an hour to complete. If you don't have a set of those Torx bits, buy a set. You're going to need them for a lot of the things in your van built. Also, right at the end, I didn't show neatening up the wires and putting cable ties back on them underneath the seat, so that's something you're going to want to do. Also, don't forget to connect the negative on your battery. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. 
If you have any questions or comments, please put them below. Please subscribe, hit that notification bell, and YouTube will let you know each time I put out a van build video. If you haven't seen the other videos in the series, please take a look, and hopefully you'll see me on the next one. Thank you for watching.